Hi again and welcome to this tutorial on Elastic Foundations. You can define springs in Embrace 3D and although most bridges are not actually supported on Elastic Foundations per se, uh, we thought this would be useful to show how you could solve the theoretical exercise of the beam of a beam on Elastic Foundations. There's a lot of uh, theory behind it, there's a lot of equations, there's closed form solutions but here we're going to show how you could solve this problem with just numerically inverting the stiffness matrix. So we've got here a steel structure and nothing on top of it, so just direction analysis, uh, and springs, point loads. So that's, that's all we need to run this very simple problem. We have one girder, which is 60 foot long. We have 65 springs. Why 65? It's 60 foot long, we said. So we need a, a spring in the vertical direction at every foot. This is going to be our assumption. We're going to use a stiffness of 0.1 kip per inch at every foot. This is sort of the linear spring that we have under the beam. And then we have another four springs which are there just for stability in the transverse direction, so one, and also in the longitudinal direction, so that's two. In case you're not sure, one here is the transverse direction, and two, y direction, is the longitudinal direction. So we need one of each at each end, so that's four. 60 foot, so 61 points, so 61 plus four, 65. All right, these are dummy springs, and these are vertical springs, direction three, so vertical direction, at uh, every foot. You can see here it starts at zero and it goes incrementally one by one till the end of the beam. Right. Let's go to next. We can hit this button if we want to here for this very simple case. It won't, it won't matter. We have a mesh size of 12 inches and that's really important here because we have what we want to model is uh, a beam that has a spring under under each node. So this we are doing this on purpose. The 12 inch here is on purpose. This this is the form where we define our cross-sectional dimensions. Of course, we can find help here. This is very standard. We are assigning that profile to all the segments. There's 60 segments here. As expected, we are turning on the whole beam, so from 0 to 60. We are also turning on the springs and keep, keeping a stiffness multiplier of 1. And we can define any loading. So here, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to apply a point load which acts at uh, mid-span of the beam. Location on the cross-section 8, meaning it's acting at this node. Magnitude minus 10 kips, so it's going downward in the direction of uh, gravity. And direction 3, so that's z. The z direction here is, is the gravity. So it's negative because it's going down. It's a node that's going down and not up. I am not turning on the self-weight, I just want to see the impact of the point load here. And I'm clicking on run. This model runs really quickly, you barely have the time to see the solver working in the background. Um, these are the plate thicknesses, again this is something I, I show every time, but this is a nice way to check your plate thicknesses. You can see the springs under each node, let's zoom in. You can see the springs, right? And the point load acting here at the top flange. You can see the dummy springs at the ends for stability. And now we can look at the uh, linear elastic solution. And here you can see that uh, it is it is going down. So if I go to three here, I will be able to visualize the vertical displacements. It it, it is going down and the maximum displacement is about 1.8 inch. 
you can visualize any type of thing like the font misses stress on the tops on the top face if you check to here on the bottom face if you go to one and you see here bottom face so the maximum stress is all about 4.5 inch 4.5 ksi i mean you can go to charts to vi visualize the, the displacements you can see the the bell shaped curve here for the displacements you can go uh, to uh, moment and visualize the moment diagram okay and of course the shape of this curve is very dependent on the spring stiffness that you assign along the bridge if there were no springs if the beam was simply supported because we have a point load at mid span you would expect something more regular you would expect straight lines between these three points okay between here and here and between here and there here with the springs we have something which is which is different and they are closed form solutions but um, these are sometimes complex and here this is a nice way to to visualize the moments and and shear diagrams uh, automatically you can see here the shear i've got a jump of 10 kips goes from plus 5 to minus 5 and that's of course because i'm applying a 10 kip point load so this totally makes sense all right all right this is it for this very simple tutorial on elastic foundations i hope you've enjoyed it and stay tuned for further tutorials